Today's lecture starts with a review. I forgot to show you what a para-influenza virus looks like. So let's see here. You're in my outdoor class here in Los Angeles. And this is a diagram of the para-influenza virus. Let's go look here and see if we can see a image. This is from Wikipedia. This is the image of the para-influenza virus. I had two questions that were given to me this morning from the hospital. Um, and I just want you to know that there is no such thing as a bad questions. Some of the questions might make me smile, but that doesn't mean it's a bad question. Okay, question number one. Will the pneumonia vaccine protect you from COVID-19? Well, the pneumonia vaccine is a vaccine that is aimed to prevent you from getting a bacterial pneumonia. COVID-19 is a virus. So a vaccine against bacteria will not protect you from direct transmission or from getting COVID-19. Uh, what it will do is it will reduce your chances of getting a bacterial pneumonia, which could be secondarily beneficial. Okay, question number two. Will the influenza vaccine protect me from getting COVID-19? Now, this is a pretty good question because when you see the structures of these viruses, and I will show you the structures of the viruses just like I've been doing, just like just now, you'll see that there are some similarities. However, the COVID-19 is a coronavirus and influenza is an influenza virus. They are two completely different types of viruses. They've got different um, genetics on the inside, DNA, RNA, uh, different protein capsid, and different outer structures. These different outer structures are so different that they're not the same virus. So the COVID-19 coronavirus is not the same as the influenza virus. Okay, now it's time to see if I can get some breakfast. And uh, yeah, this is a working lecture. We're gonna be eating, working, and learning. Okay, so here I am at Wadachito. And hi. hi, so I'm actually teaching a lecture about uh, the virus that we're having in the world right now. So I actually still learn things too. This is my Spanish teacher. Yeah, he's my, he's my internet teacher. <laughs> so what am I going to eat today? Hi, everything is fine. So what am I going to eat? I eat, you eat. Okay, okay, I know, I said it here. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. okay. I have one place, one place for bread for you. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have a salad. Healthy, healthy, all right? Okay, wait a minute. Healthy and eggs. Okay, wait a minute. No worries. Gracias. What is it? What is it? What is it? This is eggs and, how do you say vegetales in English? Vegetables. Vegetables, tacos, yeah. and beans. Oh, yeah. And for my tortilla, this is good breakfast in the morning. And some chili, some chili. A little chili salsa de tomato. Salsa, oh, salsa. Okay. Which one? I will. Okay. Back to our video. This is my breakfast. So, back in downtown LA. And, uh, Esther made me what you just heard. Does eating spicy food help reduce your chances of getting the coronavirus? It might. Why? Well, because chili, chilies, chili peppers, have ingredients in them that are, that actually can kill viruses. I'll have to talk about that another time, but yes, it is possible that eating spicy food during this pandemic might reduce your chances of getting the disease. <clears throat> the virus for today is the respiratory syncytial virus, also known as the 
human orthopneumovirus. Okay. Uh, this virus is 120 to 200 nanometers in size. It does have a lipid envelope. And in the core of the virus is RNA, ribonucleic acid. There's a few types of respiratory syncytial virus, um, but there's no vaccine yet. Okay. This illness usually, usually I see small children, definitely under the age of five, with this illness. Uh, the symptoms of respiratory syncytial virus, also known as RSV, everybody loves acronyms in today's world. I just had a nurse text me, a friend of mine, something with three or four letters. I don't even know what it was. All right, so the symptoms of RSV are, uh, you'll notice that I give my symptoms from top to bottom. Pay attention. Fever, runny nose, nasal congestion. Uh, let's have a bite of nopalis. Irritability, an irritable baby. Cough, sneezing. Sometimes you'll hear wheezing, shortness of breath. And another thing that you'll notice, especially in the very, very young babies who cannot talk to you, is they will be irritable, they'll sound like they're having to struggle to breathe, and they won't want to eat or drink. So those are three things that if you notice that in your young baby under the age of one, you need to be concerned. Babies under the age of one need to be eating, uh, sorry, need to be drinking, taking fluids on a regular basis. If they don't, they get dehydrated very quickly. Um, a baby under the age of one, if that baby is, uh, looks like it's working to breathe, that is not normal. Under the age of one, a baby should look calm. Maybe it's crying. Crying is okay. A good, strong cry, that's a great thing. A baby that can't cry, looks really weak, barely opens its eyes, won't move when you try to talk to it, just it's moving really slowly, feels kind of weak. That's a sick baby, a really sick baby, potentially. You got a baby with those three characteristics, I would be happy for you to bring that baby into the emergency room so that we can figure it out. On the other hand, mild RSV is just like a common cold. You can't tell the difference. Runny nose, a little bit of congestion. Kids acting otherwise normal, taking fluids and food depending on the age, of under the age of five usually. And um, doesn't seem that sick. They could still be having RSV. Do you need to freak out about that? No. Why? Because your kid is drinking and eating, seems to be acting normal, and just has a cold. You don't need to go to the ER anytime you, you're worried about things. Look at your child. Try to figure it out. Again, I will repeat them again. I want you to memorize this. In RSV, if you have a baby under the age of one and you notice these following things, I'm going to list four items. You need to come to the emergency room with your child. Lethargy. I described that. The, the baby that doesn't want to move. Babies love to move. They love to like move their arms and wiggle and, and cute things that we love. They're not doing that when they normally would. That's a problem. Number two, this is a pretty bad one. If you look at their lips or their face or anything and it looks bluish, that's a bad sign. You need to come to the hospital. And then, number three, it looks like the baby is not breathing right now. You see the nose kind of baby, you'll look at the baby and you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know this, but it will look like the baby is struggling to breathe. Bad indicator. Bad indicator. And then number four, the baby, again under the age of one, 
is not wanting to take the bottle or breastfeed, it's not wanting to take liquids. Babies are automatically programmed to take liquids, they're automatically programmed to drink. They want to, uh, if you're breastfeeding, they want to breastfeed all the time. Uh, or they want to take the bottle very often. That's normal for a baby. So if that stops happening, and you notice these other things, you need to come to the hospital. So, the cafe de la olla, mm, delicious here. Did not eat all my tortillas, but I did finish my plate. Now it's time for dessert. Okay, so, here is a diagram showing the shape of the RSV virus. You can see that it has a, let's see here, it's got a central RNA, or the uh, genetic material that encodes the virus. Then it has this kind of yellowish structure here. This is the uh, capsid, the protein capsid, you can see. They name some of the different proteins here, but this is the protein capsid. And then you have this outer, right here, lipid bilayer. And there you have it, RSV virus. There is um, an electron microscopic image, but it doesn't look that good. I know you wanted to see it, so here it is. Um, looks like a bunch of squiggly lines to me. I can't really tell what's going on. So I'm not going to sweat this one for the teaching point. I forgot that uh, one of the other things I'm doing here on YouTube or on the internet is I'm teaching you guys to enjoy your life, have a good quality life. And this teaching about the viruses, if you listen, I'm giving so many little pearls of information, it's unbelievable. Um, I guess probably later on, I will need to... Uh, I'll need to like sit down and put all the little pearls into a nice package. But for now, these pancakes are delicious. It's there. Hey, thank you for a delicious breakfast. It was so good. Okay, my friend. <laughs>